I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter 4. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter 5. I walk down another street. When you go to that place, when you do the meditation, and when you make what we call conscious contact with your higher self and with God, when you make that conscious contact, you shift from a belief in God or a knowing about God to knowing God. There's a very big difference between knowing about God and knowing God. Knowing about God is a belief. Knowing God is conscious contact. It's direct inner knowing. And so you make this inner contact and you have a certainty about what it is that you want to manifest. And that, that desire that you have is consistent with all nine of these principles. That it is based on unconditional love and it's based on the power of attraction and it's based on your higher awareness and it's based on generosity and service and kindness. And then you are absolutely certain. And then you're able to detach because you're not really concerned about how it's going to show up. You see, your job in this whole business of manifesting, your job is not to say how and when. Your job is to say yes. Just yes. And then you let the how and the when take over. Now, when I say this, I know immediately what the ego part of us starts to think. I want it now, but I have to have it this way. But if I don't get it pretty soon, then I'm going to go broke. And then if this doesn't show up over here, then I'm going to have to go on welfare. And if I have to go on welfare, then the, and your mind starts playing all of these games about how terrible things are going to be if the person that you want to manifest doesn't show up the way you want him to show up, or if the child that you expect to have isn't showing up on time, or if the finances, or if the job, or whatever, and there's this, this push and this anxiety and this stress, which is based on fear and based on distrust. But you know, when you have this knowing, as it says in the Course, when you have this certainty, great things have no fear of time. You see, the universal intelligence doesn't operate in the parameters of time. Time is just our way of carving up the oneness. I was reading a story of Einstein as a young boy. And one of the things it said about young Einstein is that when he was a little boy, he picked up a compass. And when he picked up this compass, he noticed that there was something that would move the needle. But he couldn't find anything in the compass that was moving the needle. And he was intrigued by what it was that would move the needle. And he would go and turn in a certain way. He'd make a 90 degree turn and the needle would turn and face whatever direction it was that he was facing. And yet, he hadn't done anything. And he was intrigued by what this force was inside or outside or what it was that allowed this... What, what would make this needle move? That force, that universal intelligence, that thing that is nameless, that thing that we can't identify in the physical world, is the provider of all of the things that will manifest to you in the physical world. And it is also the source of your life. So that when you have an alignment with that force, what happens is you get very, very peaceful. And when you get peaceful, you stop insisting. You just know. You just 
know that it's going to show up. And you're not demanding. You're not looking under the leaves for it. You're not asking any for any favors. In fact, you understand that this universal force cannot provide special favors because it is everywhere. And if it were just for you and not for someone else, that would immediately make it not a universal force. It would be now someplace that it isn't. There's no favoritism in this. There's just this positive, absolute, unconditionally loving, knowing force in the universe that holds everything together that you come to honor, to respect, to know. And you know, it's really like, it's like changing around your perspective in life. It's like walking a new path. I've always loved this. I've read it many, many times in my talks. It's a, a little story by a woman named Portia Nelson. And she was asked, as a group of people were asked, in a seminar to write down her autobiography. But they said, you only have one page. And you have to write your autobiography in five short chapters on one page. The autobiography of your life. That was the assignment. So Portia Nelson wrote her autobiography of her life in five short chapters. And this is what she said. Chapter one. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter 2. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. Chapter 3. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. Chapter 4. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. Chapter 5. I walk down another street. The story of her life. And it's really the story of higher consciousness. And it's the story of manifesting. Being able to manifest your heart's desire to align yourself and your intentions with this divine organizing intelligence that is limitless, that is inexhaustible, that is ever-expanding, that is abundant, that is all-providing and all-knowing and everywhere at the same time, is like walking down another street. To align yourself with that and to know that that alignment in itself is enough to bring whatever it is that has particularized, that is individualized into the world that you would like to have show up in your life and align with the particularization of that divine intelligence that is you, that it's just bringing it all together. It's just a realignment. And it will cooperate with you. The thing that will keep it from working for you is any obstacle to that flow. As I talked about when I was speaking about unconditional love, the minute that you put hatred, anger, bitterness, tension, anxiety, stress in the way of that intelligence between you and that intelligence, you block that flow. It is a flowing. That's why we use water as a symbol of it. 